Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make a fake 3D sort of tree. I mean it's a bit of an illusion. There is no 3D going on right now. Basically each tree is drawn as three layers and those layers react to the distance they are away from something. In this case it's going to be our player. Now when you implement this into your game you're obviously going to be using views and your player is going to be followed by a view. And what you're going to do is that view is going to be your perspective. So it's going to be reacting to where the viewer is seeing the trees. As you can see, look at that, they move about depending on the perspective that our player will be able to see. Check that out. Pretty cool stuff. So let's jump into the code and I can show you how you can implement this into your own game. It doesn't take that much. I mean, it's a few lines of code and there we go. You have fake trees. Let's go. So here we are within the base project and currently I've got Sprite Player which you've seen before. I've got Sprite Tree, which has three sub-images. I thought we'd just choose one on Tree Create, and then each one would kind of look a little bit uh, unique. So, okay. And we've got an Object Player, who has a step event that rotates smoothly towards the mouse, as well as does some basic movement. Okay, so let's go in here and create Object Tree. Give it that sprite. Add a Create event some code. So let's first get a random image index of those three. I'm just going to leave it up to the randomizer to choose either 0, 1, or 2. Okay, so that'll have a random image index, but also if we're dealing with image indexes and we don't want them to change, we set image speed to 0. Right, then we've got to grab our x and y offset which is set to the x and y coordinates on create then basically what we're doing is taking that one image that sprite of this tree whichever one it chooses and we're going to be drawing it three times each time it's going to be slightly more transparent and slightly smaller so the bottom one's going to be big and somewhat opaque the next one's going to be slightly smaller more transparent and the last one at the top is going to be very small and quite transparent and then as the player moves towards and away from this tree, the perspective is going to change to give it that sort of fake 3D look. So that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to have three parts. Part 1, part 2, and part 3. Each of which is going to be set to random rotation, furthermore giving it uniqueness. Right, like that. Then we're going to set up a tree height. Oops. And the funny thing about this variable is the smaller the number, the larger the tree. Uh, the height, that is. But kind of will look terrible if you make this really small and then the, the parts will be drawn quite far apart and the perspective will be exaggerated. So we don't want that. So I'm going to give it a 20. Fiddle around with this uh, with this number. Actually, what you could do is you could bind this value to some sort of key press and then increase and decrease it as you test it. And if you're going to be implementing this fake tree into your game, that'll be a good way to determine how tall you actually want your tree to be before it starts looking ridiculous. So there we go. Tree height is going to be 20. And we've got all our variables initialized right over there. Then we're going to have a step event. It's going to have four parts. We've got the X and Y's of the player and how far away they are from the tree. So here we say, well, if our X of this tree minus the object player.x, so that's the difference between the X coordinate of the tree and the X coordinate of the player, is greater than zero. So in this case, the object player is going to be from where the perspective is determined. If you're using a view or something else like that, you're going to have to do that accordingly. So our x offset is going to be that of point distance. Now, because we're dealing with x for this first thing, it's going to be x, y is going to be 0, object player dot x, and the y again is going to be 0. And we're going to divide that all by the tree height. And I accidentally pushed that, so that. Bam, bam, done. Okay, so x offset is the distance 
we've got the x and 0, we've got object player x and 0. Then we're going to do this once more. Change this to less than, and then put a negative in front of point distance. Alright, so that's set up the x perspective difference. Now we're going to do the same for y. So if I grab this one, we'll be very careful that we don't accidentally forget to change variables, especially with copy pasting. So this one was greater than also. This must be object play dot y. This is going to be x offset equals point distance. This is going to be zero. Everything to do with x is going to be zero. That one's going to be y. This one's going to be object player dot y. Cool stuff. And then copy. Again, put a negative in front of point direction when we paste it for the other one. This is going to be less than. And the rest is exactly the same. So, pretty cool. So we've got our x difference, we've got our y difference to set up that perspective. x offset and y offset is going to be updated. Now what we've got to do is create a draw event and draw these separate parts. Firstly the base, then the middle bit, then the topmost piece of the tree. So let's jump into that draw event. There we go, draw, draw. Some code. So three parts here. We're going to have three draw sprites Extended. And firstly, we want to keep the sprite index. Uh, probably be easier for me just to type this out. And our image index that was chosen is fine. Then we have our x start plus our x offset. And we're going to divide it by some magic numbers. Um, you're also going to have to fiddle around with these to find a good sweet spot depending on what you want. So 6.5 y start also plus the y offset and divide that by 6.5 keep that uh, constrained then next what we've got our x scale let's make the base 0.7 of original size constrain those and what are we drawing the rotation which is part 1 over there then here I'm going to use negative 1 or c white we don't want it to change color and transparency, this is the base, so let's make it 0.9. Close that off. And we're going to copy this. Paste it. Twice more. Alright, so that is the base. This is the middle bit, and this is the top. So, change this to 2.5. Change the top to 1.5. Then the scales. Let's make this 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and the topmost piece can be 0.3, I think is a good one. Don't forget to change these to part 2 and part 3, because we're going to get the same rotation. And then the player is going to see that it's all a trick, and then they'll hate you. So we want to make sure that they don't know this is just an illusion. And 0.8 and 0.7 transparency. Okay, so we've got our sprite index, image index, we've got our offset. As you can see down here, this is our x and y the position. Okay, and our y position. Then we've got our scale, x and y, and our rotation and our color for the three different parts. The top one, the middle one, and the very bottom one. Notice as they're drawn, the next one is drawn above the previous one. So that's the order. Topmost one right at the bottom. Okay, so let's quickly go and check that everything is a okay. Yes, that looks fine, and our create does indeed look all right. Don't forget that you must mix camel case with underscores. So I don't want to have an underscore here and use camel case later on. So make sure that you do keep your naming consistent, otherwise it's going to come up with errors that it cannot find variables that you think you have already declared. So there we go, we're using underscores. Tree height is 20. So when we call it, underscore. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Let's go to our room. Okay, as you can see, it's quite a big room. 5,000 by 5,000. Uh, we've got a view set up there. Let's add our objects, create some sort of forest down here, I think. There we go. Go to forest, save, and let's test this out. So here we are. We have our very sparse forest spread out everywhere. And as we move, you can see the trees create that sort of perspective. The further I am away, I get this kind of perspective, the top piece moves far to the right, move towards it, stack around underneath, further to the right, so you can see. So this effect is rather small, rather unnoticeable when you have a view following a player for example, but you do notice 
that it can be seen. See there, there's the difference between the top tree, top piece, and the bottom piece. And if we move closer to it, that piece gets bigger. That side gets bigger. See, it's greater. So it's another one of those little, little, little effects that can greatly change your game and make it look better. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more of the very best game making tutorials. If you have any suggestions, put them in the comments or send me a PM or something. I'd be more than happy to try and put something together if it can benefit the entire community. That'd be really cool. If you really liked what you see here, as well as my other game making tutorials, please check out my Patreon campaign. You can sponsor this channel for a couple of bucks a month. I do really appreciate your support. You can download the project file straight in the description, play around with it, mess around with those variables, see how you can get your fake your fake 3D tree to look pretty cool. You can follow me on various social media platforms, you got your Twitter and your Facebook and your Instagram, links are all in the description. So until next time, play around with those effects and see what you can do to make fake 3D look like real 3D. Pretty cool. Okay. Cheers for now guys.